hello everybody and welcome back to my channel today i'm going to be going over how i organize my workspace and systems in roblox studio and i just want to let you know that this is going to be an intermediate tutorial so if you do not have prior knowledge of scripting or if you do not have prior knowledge of object oriented programming then this might be a little bit difficult for you but it's still a really great tutorial on how you can organize your workspace so you should still watch it for that just to prepare as you get better at programming so that you can have the most success when developing your own games. If you want to see more tutorials like this, then please leave a comment below. And without further ado, let's get into it. So we made a to-do list right here for game planning. If we were to make a pet simulator type game, first we would want to make a pet, collectible items that the pet could collect for you, an interaction system, a player handler that handles the scoring, their pets and their data. We would want to make more levels as well in the map that could be unlocked with a gate. What I usually do is I create a server initializer and a client initializer. In here, we would do things like like require modules and initialize them, obviously, as the title states. It's just always a good idea to require your modules in a more controlled way to avoid errors or to avoid things loading before other things that you don't necessarily want to load first. So once you have your client and server initializer, what I like to do is I like to go into replicated storage and set up a few folders. Right here we have systems, classes, assets, and remotes. In systems, we just put various, obviously, systems that we're going to be using in the game. Then in the class area, we have a base class that all of our other classes inherit from to create a generic class. And then inside of here, we would require the base class, create a class based off of that. And once you create that, then you can also make more inherited stuff. So if we have an interactable class where you can do various things on the server and client, from using this class, then when you go into inherited items underneath, what you can do is just have a parent class right here and create a class based off of that parent class and initialize it as well inside of the new classes initialization. I just said classes way too much, but hopefully that makes sense. And so if we go back out to our to-do, we have the game planning, which is make a pet. So what we've done here is we've made a pet class where you can just insert any random stats, like here we're going to put self.stats equals this and we're going to put speed equals one, um, storage size equals one, level equals one, total points equals one. We can change this as we go further into here, so if we have a basic pet, then we can do some basic stats for this pet and some basic animations and that kind of thing. But as we progress, we can create new classes based off of the base pet class. And it just makes it a lot easier to minimize how much code you are producing because if you're in a class here, you can put function pet class move to, and then you would put like a lot of code in there, many, many lines. So we're gonna delete that. Um, but once you put all of that stuff in there, you don't necessarily want to rewrite that into your next class. So because we inherited this pet class here, we don't need to put that there and we can just say self so move to in here and it will know that exists based off of the pet class here, which is really cool. And that's why I love using object oriented programming. To move on, we want to make collectible items. So what I did was I made an interactable class here and in here you would insert things like function interactable class on client interact. Then you'd put information in here where you would from the client side. And then you can also add a function interactable class on server interact. And in here you would just enter anything that you want to have in there. But what's also nice is when you make an interactable class, you just have a function interactable class pass to server. And in here you would just put any kind of information that you want to pass to the server, self.remote, virus server, any information you want to put here. And then in here you would just put game get service run service is client self.remote equals a dorney wait for a child remote event, but then else self.remote equals instance.new remote event 
help.remote.parent equals Adorni. And so now that we have this remote here, we can just pass information from the server to client and self.remote.onServerEvent, we would just put in here self on server interact player dot dot dot. We would put player dot 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 and whatever information we want to put in there. So then if we had a coin, we could just update what these functions do. So we could do function coins on server interact player dot dot dot. Basically you would just say self collect coin player. And then in function coins collect coin, we could put something in here like if we get game mem, first we could get the user ID, local user ID equals user, player dot user ID. And then what we do is game mem dot player objects, user ID, give coins. And then we would do self destroy so that the coins would disappear as well. And then we would probably put in here self dot worth. I just want to point out that I'm writing pseudocode when I say self.destroy. You definitely need to make your own destroy function so that you can clean up your class properly, like removing any connections from it, removing the Adorni, and also removing it from storage. And that's basically how you can use this class system for interactables so that it just makes it a lot easier to add new interactions as well. And then, so that's it for classes. Next, I'm going to move on to assets. In assets, so we could just put base pet and in here we could put its root part and under this root part, we could put that it is the class of a pet. And then when you load all of these objects into the world, you can connect the object to this class here. So the Adorni would be the base pet's primary part and then the model would be above it. I really like this method. It's very helpful when you're trying to create a bunch of objects and put them into the world and make them have some functionality for you to just, okay, I'm gonna show you how I would do this next. And you go to interaction system, local interaction system equals that return interaction system. You could just do something like function interaction system dot init or IV in pairs collectible get tagged interactable do and then we would once hit the class ID which usually what I would do is I would add an attribute to it so local at equals b get attribute class ID then you would want to go into the interactable class so local class equals game dot replicated storage dot classes dot interactable class find first child attribute if class then you want to do class new v and that would kind of just set up your way for you to connect functionality to each interactable object in your world and this can work from the client and the server which is also very nice so you would just require interaction system from the client and then you would also require this from the server so we're just going to clone that and put that here but we won't want to require that. and we would also just include remotes in here for any random communication from server to client that we would add. So that is how I would set up replicated storage. And now I also want to get into how I would do GUI. So right here in the starter GUI, I just have screen GUIs in here. But what I did was under here, I added a tag GUI components and I added an attribute GUI ID which here we have it say interaction GUI. So if you go into replicated first and we go into GUI components, you can see that we have a module that is also called interaction GUI. And so in our systems, we have something called GUI components. And when you open it, what we do is anything tagged GUI components, we add the GUI here through this function where every one of these GUI components has a return function with the GUI in here. So you can initialize it and add any nonsense that you want under this function that will happen as soon as you require it from GUI components, which makes it really easy for you to have a list of GUIs that might have the same functionality. So if you wanna add just another thing for interactions and then you can have it named the same GUI ID, you can just reuse this code wherever without needing to rewrite things and put under your GUIs themselves, which I also find super helpful. 
Anyways, that's it for this video. If you want to see more tutorials from me, then let me know. And don't forget to subscribe because it really helps and makes me feel good. And don't forget to like as well because again, it makes me feel good. And I hope you all have a wonderful day and goodbye.